Hey, good evening. I want to welcome you to this midweek Bible study brought to you by the Whitehall Church of Christ. My name is Kevin Law. I'm the pulpit minister here for the church. We are in an expository study of the book of John. So if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to get them as we will be looking at chapter 3. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the testimony given by John the Baptist, beginning in verse 22, and we'll go to the end of the chapter. Again, that's John chapter 3, beginning in verse 22, for this Bible study, December 15th, 2021. Let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you for beautiful weather that we're having here in December. Thank you for the sun. Thank you for the blessing of life. Thank you for the fact that you give us all the things we need to sustain, to sustain life, uh, to practice godliness, and to be the people that you've called us to be. Encourage us this day, Father, in this study. Help us to glean much from John's testimony about who Christ Jesus actually is. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. John chapter 3, beginning in verse 22. After these things, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there and was baptizing. John was also baptizing near Salim because water was plentiful there, and people were coming and were being baptized. For John, at this time, had not yet been put into prison. Now a discussion rose, arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and they said, Rabbi, he who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear witness of me that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He, Jesus, must increase. I, John, must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, and yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son. He has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. This last section that we're going to be looking at in chapter 3 is a continuation of the testimony that John the baptizer had been giving about the Christ. John's disciples had become jealous. It seemed as if everybody was starting to move away from John and his disciples and had started going to see this man named Jesus. I also want to look at a passage of scripture found in Matthew chapter 11. Now this is where Jesus is talking about uh, John the Baptist and He's making a statement to those of whom had been conversing about John. This is when John uh, had been imprisoned and he is discouraged. And uh, even though he is proclaiming Jesus to be the son of God, in this instance, after he had been imprisoned, uh, he was saying, are you the one or should we look for one who's coming after you? John was very discouraged. Um, and Jesus said, you know, go back. He, he didn't say, tell John, yes, I am the one. He simply said, go back and tell John the blind see, uh, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. Um, and in that, um, 
in that instruction that Jesus gave to go back to John, John would have recognized, hey, this is indeed the Son of God who's come into the world to save the world from its sins. And so um, when John's disciples left to report to John everything that Jesus had told him, Jesus started talking to the crowd about this man named John. John, uh, the one that we know as John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, the one who was the forerunner to the Christ, six months born, different than what Jesus was. So Jesus asked a question. What is it that you uh, expected to see when you went out, went out into the wilderness to see John? Um, did you expect to see... I love the way Eugene Peterson phrases this in the message translation. He says, did you expect to see a weekend camper? Hardly. What then? Did you expect to see a sheik in silk pajamas? Not in the wilderness, not by a long shot. So what then did you expect to see? A prophet? That's right, a prophet. Probably the best prophet you'll ever hear. He's the prophet that Malachi announced when he wrote, I'm sending my prophet ahead of you, Jesus, to make the road smooth for you. Let me tell you what's going on here, Jesus continues. No one in history surpasses John the baptizer, but in the kingdom he prepared for you, the lowliest person is ahead of him. Isn't that tremendous news? Jesus says, you know, there's nobody better in the kingdom of God than John the baptizer. But even the lowliest in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. For a long time now, people have tried to force themselves, Jesus said, into God's kingdom. But if you read the books of the prophets and God's law closely, you will see them culminate in John, teaming up with him and preparing the way for the Messiah of the kingdom. Looked at in this way, John is the Elijah you've all been expecting to arrive and introduce the Messiah. Actually, that's what Malachi even uh, spoke to John as being the Elijah that was coming to prepare the way for the Lord. Jesus continues, are you listening to me? Are you really listening? How can I account for this generation? The people have been like spoiled children, whining to their parents. Jesus gives John the greatest commendation. He says, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you expect to see? A prophet? Yeah, I, I tell you more than a prophet. I say that those who have been born among women, women there has not risen one greater than John. In all of the other Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the account of Jesus' ministry actually begins after John's imprisonment. Um, but our study today kind of fills in the gaps as to what had happened to this man that we call John. In Matthew chapter 11, John had been imprisoned for his faith in Christ Jesus. And prior to his imprisonment in John 3, John makes proclamation as to who Jesus Christ truly is. It's not the first time he had made proclamation, but he does it again in John chapter 3 nonetheless. And John's disciples had become envious of Jesus and his disciples and his newly um, acclaimed fame, if you will. As a matter of fact, Jesus' disciples were baptizing more than John's disciples, and they just couldn't understand that Jesus and John are both on the same team. And while Jesus' testimony of John is powerful in Matthew chapter 11, I believe John's testimony of the Christ uh, is the one that we really need to focus on. Um, everyone who serves in the kingdom of God does so at the pleasure of God. It is God who designs all of this. It's God who is the one who orchestrates all this through the power of the Holy Spirit. So John's attitude in this section of scripture, uh, teaches us the importance of being humble. We're reminded John found his joy in himself decreasing and the fact that Jesus was increasing. He loved serving in the role that would bring more glory to Jesus than to himself. 
Um, and that's a good lesson for us today. Uh, it's good for us to emulate John because genuine humility will call attention to Jesus Christ and, and not to ourselves. Genuine humility uh, doesn't come from feelings of worthlessness. It's not that we have to berate ourselves or tear ourselves down. Don't decrease yourself in order to increase Christ. That's not how this works. That's pseudo humility. That's false humility. That's not what he's calling us to do. Simply focus on the greatness of Jesus. That's exactly what John did. He simply focused on the greatness of the Lord. He focused on the greatness of the one to whom he had been uh, sent to serve, if you will. So don't try to decrease yourself by uh, trying to look super humble. If we glorify God in the manner that we have been given instruction to, if when we are most satisfied in God is when I believe he is most glorified. Humility just kind of emerges. It comes out naturally when we focus on Jesus more so than we do ourselves. It just comes out without us even knowing it. So it's something that it's nothing that we construct, it's nothing that we manufacture. It's simply a byproduct. I believe it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, this humility that comes out of us when we realize that God is God and we are not, when we realize that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I think it's good for us to sort of emulate what John is doing here. John uh, immediately says, look, uh, the only one who has the bride is the bridegroom. It's not the best man. So John's the best man of this thing. Jesus is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. And this marriage is taking place between God's people and, and Christ. John's disciples were confused over the fact that John's status was one of forerunner. He was one that was kind of paving the way for the Christ. Um, and the fact that he wasn't the main man. All these disciples have been following John, believing him, uh, to be the main man in the story, but he, in essence, said, that's not me. They complained of Jesus's increase in popularity, and so John has to remind them again of what his role is in all of this. He gladly stepped aside so that he could teach his disciples the most important lesson that he was actually bringing in that day, and that was this. Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. He is divine. He is the one that must in increase, whereas John must decrease. Um, the best man's responsibility was different in Jesus's day than what it is today. Today, the best man comes alongside uh, the groom, stand along alongside him during the ceremony, usually hand him the ring to put on the bride's hand. But the best man's responsibility back in Jesus's day was much more uh, involved, if you will. Um, in addition to helping the bridegroom prepare his home for that day when the bride would come to stay there permanently, uh, he also helped direct the wedding feast at the end of the uh, the, bop, the end of the dating period. And so his most significant duty was to kind of guard the bridal chamber um, during the feast, during the wedding feast which sometimes would last days. It was the best man's responsibility to kind of um, guard the door of the bridal chamber. And especially after the bride, the bride would slip into the room uh, unnoticed by the guest. And so it was the best man's responsibility to allow the bride to slip into the uh, brothel chamber and do so in such a way that nobody else could uh, recognize what was going on. He guarded that door. No one except the bridegroom was allowed to go near the bridal chamber. That was a responsibility of the best man. And so when the friend of the groom heard the groom's voice, he stood aside. He had actually fulfilled his role in the celebration of the bride and the groom. And that's what John's responsibility was. Guys, if you think about it, that's what our responsibility is. It's for us to tell other people the glory that is to be wrapped up in the bridegroom, Christ Jesus. The church is the bride. And so we have been privileged with telling other people just how incredibly special it is to be a part of the kingdom of God 
which we know as Christ's church, the church of Christ. We are the bride. He is the bridegroom. Let's not confuse the fact that we all have a responsibility to share with other people who this Jesus truly is. I pray you have a blessed day, and I pray that um, you're staying safe. Uh, I hope and pray that you're, you've not been affected by the virus. I know many people have. Uh, let's keep vigilant. Let's keep working toward um, hopefully finding a cure for the virus. But at the same time, help us to remember. I, I think we need to be helped to remember that the greatest virus that we've ever dealt with um, from the time humanity was put on the earth is the virus of sin. And the only remedy for that, the physician, the great physician has given us, his name is Jesus. He must increase. We must decrease. Have a blessed day.